people that have been following us know that we have done quite some tactical courses with professionals in the past already and they also know that we have done this with the use of airsoft replicas now recently we did get the opportunity to do a tactical pistol course with actual firearms and in this video we will talk a little bit about our experience of that course we will share you some tips and we will also talk a little bit about making that shift from airsoft towards firearms Guys, before we get into this video, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button because it's totally free. Also make sure to comment down below to activate that YouTube algorithm a little bit. And then also go have a look at recomrobbers.com and our shop, shop.recomrobbers.com for all the good stuff. Okay, so as said, we have done already quite an amount of tactical shooting courses with professional instructors of course with the use of airsoft and lately we have been focusing more towards the cqp aspect of these things now where is our uh, experience level at well for me and my brother i can say that we both have a pretty good foundation when it comes to the tactical aspect of shooting but on the other side we are just new fresh basically when it comes to actually firing a firearm so we still have to learn all about that. Now on the other end we have our close friend Woody who joined us this time and I can say that he basically joined us every single time nearly when it came down to these uh, training courses we have done in the past. He has a far better base of shooting a firearm than we do because he has been in the Belgian military and also uh, has been a sports shooter for a couple of years already. So not long ago Romulus Miho contacted us and told us that he was organizing a intro dynamic pistol course with 9mm pistols after he saw that we were getting more into uh, the firearm aspect of shooting and of course we couldn't let that opportunity just pass by so we decided with the three of us to join uh, his course. So for you guys that don't know Romulus Miho is a former special forces operative from the Romanian military and he now works as an instructor teaching both professionals and civilians in all these different tactical aspects whereas one is of course shooting. He's also a senior instructor at the European Security Academy in Poland which is one of the or let's say the uh, most advanced school when it comes to teaching tactical aspects in Europe. Now the sad thing is that we don't have a lot of footage from that day for you guys because of several reasons but we can tell you all about our experience of that single day course. Now the first thing we want to talk about are the guns that we used that day. My brother and I don't own any firearms yet because we are still going through the whole process but Woody on the other hand does have a couple of firearms for a couple of years already. Ironically enough he couldn't use any of his firearms that day because his papers came in one day too late but Romulus provided us with firearms that day and of course fitting holsters to make everything work now these guns were Glocks and to be honest both my brother and I and Woody we have shot with stock Glocks at our shooting club in the past already and their triggers are simply awful uh, factory triggers from Glocks are probably the worst you can find out there amongst all the pist modern striker fired pistols available these days. So that's not really our piece of cake. But the good thing was that these Glocks did have upgraded triggers. Now the second thing that we want to mention is that this course took place on a shooting range outside of Belgium. And this suddenly gave us a vast amount of freedom compared to what we are used to at a sports shooting club in Belgium. We were able to do things that are normally totally off limits. Take for example a loaded pistol with round in the chamber and holstering it and walking around on the range like this. Another example is pointing your pistol upwards or downwards onto the ground uh, for safety measurements which are practically basic when it comes to tactical scenarios while on the other hand probably in most countries their shooting ranges you're only allowed to point towards the target. A last example is 
simply mani manipulating your pistol, doing tactical reloads and all that stuff, which would normally be totally off limits um, or very highly restricted um, if you do things like IPSC or stuff like that. Now that all said, the third thing we want to cover is basically what we have uh, done that day. So, of course, we utilized pistols and it basically came down to all the basics when it comes to uh, shooting a pistol in tactical situations. For this we shot at chars, we shot at steel, uh, we also dry fired a couple of times to learn a few aspects and basically what we covered were things like how to grip a pistol, proper sight alignment, working the trigger and all that stuff. So wrapping it all together we basically looked at the do's, the don'ts, the house and the why's and those are all significantly different when it comes to tactical shooting compared to your typical sport or competitive shooting. And that is all due to the idea that you're working against a potential threat or someone that is attacking you in these scenarios. Now the good thing for us personally was that we were already very familiar with all these tactical aspects around shooting and also manipulating a handgun in a tactical way. Whereas if we compare that to other participants that were there, they basically had to build everything from scratch again. And that was where we had a little bit of an advantage. Now the downside for us personally is that we just got into shooting 9mm firearms, uh, handguns to be more specific. And yeah, the recoil impulse is totally different than what we are used to with these airsoft pistols. And this was exactly one of the things that Romulus mentioned to us even before we started with the course. He basically told us that if we would shoot and the shot gets fired, then our hand would basically blow up the pistol because we are not used to that grip. Now the thing was that we didn't have it at his course that day because we already shot twice with 9mm handguns at our club before so we knew what he was talking about but we do have to say that he was totally right about it because at the club first time when we went from 0.22 to 9mm bullets our hands <laughs> always blew off the gun so we had to find a way to manage that better. Now how this is done with a firearm outside the fact that you need to have a good grip posture with your body and also where you position your hands is the fact that you basically have to work with opposite and equal forces into the gun to manage that recoil. One of these things is either that you grip with your hands equally onto the gun and another one is that you can also do that by basically torquing your arms into the firearm. The only downside is that unlike with airsoft you actually have to use muscle strength for this and you can fatigue your arms over time by doing this. Now another thing when it comes to shooting firearms compared to shooting airsoft guns is your mental state and that has to do not only with safety whereas we all know a firearm can be a potentially dangerous thing so you have to keep that in mind that you have to do your safety properly but also for example when we were shooting Romulus noticed that our shots went in a bit too low uh, in the target and he noticed that we were doing something what's called jerking the gun which is basically anticipating the shot really so when we were about to shoot we expect the gun to go off we expect that recall and basically before the bullet leaves the barrel we already push um, it down with the result that we shoot too low. Romulus told us that this was something that happens quite often with new shooters and it's just something in in your brain that you have to overcome so after a couple of rounds we yeah tried to force that away and it actually worked because our groupings were much better now while we were overcoming these shooting basics we noticed that the other participants outside the three of us had some more difficulties with other aspects when it comes to tactical shooting um, one of these were simply their stances they were not used to it manipulating their gun in a tactical way is was something entirely yeah mind-blowing to them as well and also simple things like holstering the pistol and drawing it were yeah totally fresh to these guys whereas we have done these things already hundreds of times and thus they were more familiar to us so you could definitely say that uh, doing all these aspects with airsoft guns really helped us in that manner. So having that all covered, next thing we want to 
share with you guys is a basic tactical pistol drill sequence which we have learned that day and we will show it to you guys first and then break it down so you have something of your own to practice with. So this is how it goes. So let me break it down for you guys. First thing you want to do is to get into that proper fighting stance. So not in your natural, normal standing position where you're easily, easily uh, being pushed over, but more into that uh, boxing stance, whereas your feet are widened and you really have like roots into the ground. Next thing you're going to do is to is bring your hand towards your holster and release your pistol from your holster. Now while doing so, you're going to grip as high as possible onto your pistol for that proper grip. In the meantime, you're going to bring your left hand towards your chest, towards your work area, so that once that pistol is in this area, you're going to meet two hands together and form that proper grip onto the handgun. Now once both hands have met, you're going to press out the handgun to, from, from your chest towards the target. Now while doing so, you're going to work the trigger already. Why is that? Because you want to have that immediate shot released once your sights are aligned. So you're basically going to work away all the slack of the trigger and once your finger is ready at the wall and your sights are aligned, then you're going to fire the shot. So you have fired your shots, target is going down and you follow him going down. While doing so, you keep that trigger pressed back. So if he does something crazy or whatever, you can shoot again. After that, if everything checks out and he's not doing anything stupid anymore, you're going to bring the, the pistol backwards and now you're going to get your trigger finger off the trigger. So once your pistol has been taken back, you are going to initiate what's called situational awareness. Now the idea behind this is that you just had a gunfight, shots have been fired, so if someone is in the area, they must have heard it. So what you're going to do is basically anticipate on the fact that if someone is in the area and can be a threat to you, that you will see it. And for this you simply scan the area visually to see if everything is alright. Now, once that is done and everything checks out, the area is clear, you're going to work on your gun. You're going to make sure that everything is fine with the pistol. In order to do that, you're, go you're first going to check the chamber. You're going to bring the slide back a little bit and watch visually if there is still a round in the chamber. If everything checks out, you're going to bring the slide back forward and going to give a little push onto the slide and onto the magazine as well. Why you want to do this has to do with the idea that if a gun has gone through dirt or has been shot a lot, dirt eventually collects inside it and mechanical things like the slide or the magazine tend to uh, jam sometimes. And that means that <laughs> next time you're firing a round, either the round doesn't go off or the slide catches to the rear while your magazine still has rounds in it or it, it, it even falls out. So that's the part about the gun itself. We've just cleared the entire area. Now we're going to bring the pistol back towards our holster because we don't need it anymore. So how we do this, we simply put our thumb onto the slide so it doesn't move to the rear when holstering it and we bring it back into the holster and close it. Now important to know, and that is something that might be a little bit contradictional towards what you see the cool guys do on social media these days, you visually want to watch bring that pistol back into your holster. There is no reason anymore why you should not watch that pistol going into your holster. So you want to watch your holster rather than doing clumsy stuff and losing time in the end. Another important tip for everything that comes down to shooting is to take your time with these drills. The whole aspect of doing things quickly is in later stages. You first want to cover all the basics and being extremely consistent in what you do and after that you can build upon those time limits. Another thing we want to share with you guys is a bit of a realization or a reality check when it comes down to 
tactical shooting and the thing with this is that it is extremely difficult to put it in short besides just the shooting aspect there are so many things to consider that make it an extremely difficult task think about your body dynamics team dynamics enemy dynamics identification of the one you're facing using your environment in your own advantage dealing with the stress and the fears and so much more now one of the reasons why i recommend these type of courses to any shooter out there whether that is an airsofter or a sports shooter or a competitive shooter is that with these sports you don't get the whole picture and these type of trainings help you with that now another thing we do want to put out there uh, because we've seen it quite often lately is the fact that some people can have the tendency to become overconfident and having that limited view on what shooting is in reality can make a bad situation even worse from what we've learned thus far now to all you guys out there that either do airsoft and sport shooting or just sport shooting with the idea to also defend yourself in some manner we do want to bring out some pointers towards you just to make you aware of the limitations of your hobbies when facing an actual threatening situation if we only look at the airsoft aspect of tactical shooting then we can definitely say from our own experience that you cannot you cannot simply pick up any gun and expect to shoot it like you're used to in airsoft from what we've experienced you can only do that with a 0.22 once you go to that 9 millimeter forget it the forces are way too high and you're not able to work with it like like you should if you've used airsoft in a serious way like we have done in the last couple of years there are some advantages to it as well one being you do have a better understanding of enemy behavior and also how to use your environment in your in, to your advantage to some extent also the fact that you're more familiar with these tactical manipulations and working with the safety around tactical situations gives you a better position um, in these things if we only consider the sport shooting aspect of this whole thing then we can say that it is very hard to work in any type of situation with an aggressor it is never a relaxed state whereas you shoot at shards or steel and even if you go into the dynamics like IPSC shooting it is way different you do have the advantage of being confident around weapons and firing them but when it comes to the actual dynamics the manipulations of the weapon and even your mental state they are totally off and having a gun at your disposal alone won't do the trick so these are the limits that you can overcome with these type of tactical courses of course there are some aspects that most recreational shooters will never experience like yeah, bullets flying around or going through walls and the uh, stresses and the fears that uh, come with these things and let's hope it stays that way so this is a bit of a reality check on the things we have learned thus far um, but we are really curious about what you guys think about this subject let us know in the comments below now the last question we want to cover is was this course worth it well in our eyes it absolutely was um, we know it is not cheap we had to pay for it as well but it was absolutely worth it and we even to be fair got more out of it than we expected and that was the same uh, experience from Woody as well so guys if you liked the video make sure to leave a thumbs up support us by buying the good stuff of shop.recomerals.com hit that subscribe button it's still free thanks for watching and you'll see us next time